Hey, hey, let's paint a floral wreath. If you hear a weird humming sound in the background, it's because my studio is freezing and I have a, uh, a space heater on. So what we are gonna be using today, I have here some Legion um, Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press paper on a watercolor block. I actually, this is the first time I'm using this paper. Um, I like to experiment with papers. So uh, any watercolor paper you have will do. This is nine by 12 inches. I would not probably go smaller than eight by 10 inches just because it will be hard to get a whole circle, a whole wreath if you're using, you know, a tiny like five by seven piece of paper. Um, and then in addition to that, I have this Pyrex dish, which I'm going to use to make my circle. You obviously can use whatever you want. Um, masking tape roll. This is kind of tiny though. Um, jar. Again, these are smaller depending on what size you want to do. A small plate. Anything you have, you could freehand it, but I don't usually have good luck with that. Um, I have a just a really a pencil just to use it very lightly. And then I have my watercolor palette here. I am using a mixture of um, da Vinci and American Journey paints. There might be a Winsor Newton in there. I do have some liquid watercolors. Um, I don't think I'll be using them today, but you never know. I've got my water up here. Um, so let's get started. I am going to, I guess this is brand new. I guess I'm just going to rip this off here because I don't need the cover anymore. We'll just use this as a watercolor block just as it is. And I'm trying to adjust the curtains in my sunroom so that there isn't a big white beam of sun coming through, but that might be unavoidable. Okay, now, like I said, I use something to make a circle. And I'm already getting paint <laughs> where I don't want it. Um, if you, look, look what I just did, see? It's an, we're off to a, to an excellent start. I'm going to use a little, the spray bottle that I keep nearby and just try to pop that up. This isn't a huge deal, but I'll try to get some of that off. Okay. I try to find a circle that is small enough that when it's in the paper, um, or drawn around the paper, there's plenty of room on both sides to draw flowers. Otherwise, if you drew a circle that was this big, and you're drawing and using it as sort of the center point for each of your flowers, your flowers will go right off the paper, which you obviously do not want. I'm doing this super, super light. I do have a real art pencil somewhere. This is not it. Um, and this will be erased later, anything that you can see. Now, bear in mind, pencil, once you watercolor over it, you can't erase it. So if you don't use dark enough paint over it, you might see pencil through it. I oftentimes am digitizing things anyways, and I can remove stuff like that in Photoshop. So just keep that in mind. Um, I will be using probably this brush the most. I tend to use these Princeton Heritage 4050 brushes. I always use round. This is a size six. This is a size 12. Um, I use the six the most, although the 12 can be good for bigger petals and such. Um, I've already sprayed my watercolor paints. I'm going to do it again just to make sure they are fully awake. And let's get started. When I am doing a wreath like this, so you're going to want a mixture of elements. You're going to want some elements that are bigger flowers, and then you're going to want some smaller groupings of flowers, maybe some things that are more stick or berry-like. Um, but I usually start with the bigger floral elements. So I'm gonna start here and grab, this is actually liquid watercolor that's here in my palette. It's quite bright. I'm gonna add a little of this light orange color to it and really kind of wet my brush and load it up. And I think I'm gonna do a rose up here. And I'm just gonna start the center of the rose right on this line that I have drawn. So I'm drawing a little like swirl, like a little six shape, and then just doing small C shapes around, trying not to have too much white space in here. C shapes that start behind the other C shapes. And what I'm gonna do now, filling in a little bit, I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of paint on the body, I mean the belly of my brush, and I'm gonna push down harder to make thicker C 
shapes. Before I was just doing, just using the tip of my brush. Now I want to use the tip and the belly of my brush to make thicker, let's see, shaped strokes. I've left a bit too much space there, so I'm just gonna go like that. And I feel like my brush is a little bit dry. I'm gonna go back like this, like this. And just continuing to make some C-shaped other petals around. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of my this is some red color. I honestly don't know what it is. I have new red on order and I'm looking forward to using it because I think this is one of my older, um, maybe more like art artist or student grade rather than professional paints, but um, I'm just gonna tap in some color to the middle, maybe even draw a few more fine lines. Just go along here a little, just to let it bleed out. Give it a little more oomph, like so. I'm gonna wash off that color. Down here, this is just some green that I had. It's a bunch of greens mixed together. I think I want it to be a little smokier looking. Um, I love adding, this is periwinkle, um, but I love adding any purple to green because I like the almost sage kind of smoky colored dealio it gives. You could go back later and add leaves. I'm gonna add a few leaves now just for fun. So I'm gonna um, start here right next to it. I don't care if it bleeds into it and I'm gonna push down and come back with a point and then go right next to it and push down and end with a little point. My point wasn't great there. I'm gonna go like that. I think I'll do another one here. I'm gonna push down, sort of curve in there like so. Maybe dot a little more color into the base here of those leaves draw out my point a little bit and I think I'll do the same thing on this other side I just want it to be going in this this direction so I'm going to start with my point push down and sort of draw it up and in and do the same thing here I think I'll leave that as one for now so that's one big bold focal point that we have um and so now we have to kind of balance it out. I, I tend to do about three big flowers. I don't want it to be like perfectly triangular, but I'll probably do like another big one here and then maybe another big one here just to kind of have them spread out throughout. I do tend to work in pinks and peaches. I think this next one, I'm gonna add some light orange to, this actually looks like mostly what's left over in this pan is um, a daffodil yellow liquid watercolor. I don't really want that to be the main thing. So I'm adding light orange and then this is some Naples yellow. I'm gonna start with this. I may go back and add in little bits of pink here and there. I think this time what I'm gonna do is instead of a rose, I think I'm gonna do a five petaled flower. So I'm gonna imagine the center of the flower here and I'm gonna point my brush in towards the center and start down, push down on the belly and come up and then do it again and then one more time to make one petal and then I'm continuing to think of this as the middle and I'm going to point into the center and pull up. I think I'm just going to leave that one like that and then we've got our third petal here. that. I'm going to point into the center and just make these curvy kind of shapes. Kind of have a rough petal looking edge there. Kind of move my chair out of the way. I kind of move all over the place. If I wasn't recording this, I would probably move my paper more, but I'll try to keep it in one place for you guys. So two or three strokes per petal. That's good. I am going to touch a little, I'm going to add a little light orange to this pinkish mixture I had going on and tap that kind of around the center like so. Leave that for now. I might do 
a little darker yellow and tap it onto the ends of the leaves. I especially like adding color when things are wet, wet on wet painting. Okay. And I think I'll do the same thing with some leaves. Probably gonna try not to touch here. I'm gonna just draw it out like a little stem and then draw one leaf there. Another one there. Another one here. One here. And I'm just gonna draw that a little further. There we go. Now, I did draw this not going in the direction of the wreath. You can keep everything sort of going in a circular motion. But what I'll end up do, doing is adding an element here that goes like that. Maybe we'll add some fill in. I just sort of take it as it comes. I don't try to figure it all out right away. I am gonna dot a little more color into the center there. Maybe more intense pink right there, just cause I want to. And then we'll add a third large element maybe here. And I think in this case, Maybe I will do some sort of, sort of like maybe like a cone flower. I really am making this up as I go. So uh, for that, I'm gonna need a darker center. I'm gonna take some purple and add some of this yellow to it to get a brown. And I'm gonna call that good. And a cone flower has kind of um, a, a dome shaped pointy center. My daughter's coming in. This saddle can fit any horse in my room. Oh my gosh, that is, is that amazing. Warm air? Yes, it is warm air. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that is warm. It is. Does it heat the sun room? Yep. All right, I am painting and recording. I will I see you. Help. I will see. I'll come help you when I'm done. Perfect. See you after the Bye. Thank you. Just proof that uh, painting is possible even if you have children. It's true. I only have one. I realize if you have more, that's more. One thing that we started back when the pandemic started, we instituted uh, quiet time after lunch. So my daughter has an hour in her room where she plays and it allows her to see that she can entertain herself and it gives me time to do things like this. All right, so I am doing sort of a sideways cone flower. Um, I did the sideways view of what the dome would be and now I'm going to do sort of an orange color. Um, let's see, I'm gonna add some darker yellow here and then just grab a little bit of this pink that I already have mixed. And I'm gonna load up my brush and I'm gonna start from here with my point and I'm just gonna drag it down and away. And I'm gonna do that here. It's gonna bleed in, that's okay. Down and away. Down and away. If it really bothers you to have it bleed, you can try not to touch it, but it doesn't bother me. And then all of your petals are going to be pointing towards the center because that's where they grow from. And you probably wouldn't see a whole petal here, but maybe you'd see part of one. Maybe the same thing here. You can see a little bit going behind. There you go. Okay, so now we have three sort of anchor elements. Now, in the in-between spaces here, we can just do little stuff. We probably are gonna want something more over here. So maybe a cluster of small flowers or a cluster of buds, something else with color. I think what I am going to do 
is so you could do this monochromatic absolutely like you could make every flower in here indigo every flower in here orange and then have some green to balance it like you could do whatever you want I really like color I do use a lot of color so I think what I'm going to do here is add in I'm debating like I said I did not pre-plan this I might add I'm looking I'm referring to some of my recent flower paintings to see which flowers were making me the happiest. I think I'm going to do a little cluster of, those are pretty, just a little, just a little cluster of flowers here. I think I'm going to add some more, actually, I think I'm going to add some of my, uh, my scarlet liquid watercolor. Just because my red is dry and crumbly, my regular red is dry and crumbly and I'm not, I'm just not feeling crazy about it. So liquid watercolor, I have a video on liquid watercolor. My very first time using it, you could watch that. It's really intense. You can add a lot of water to it and dilute it. Um, I might add a smidge of this blue. Whoa, I don't know about that. I usually keep a scrap of paper nearby so I can test my colors. Um, I don't have a scrap. I'm just going to draw it over here. Here, this is what I ended up with. It's kind of a cranberry color. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. I'm going to roll with the cranberry color. Actually, might grab up here for a little more red. So up here, I'm going to be making little flowers that are sort of shaped like a heart or like a V. And I'm going to do several of them over here. So but I'm going to keep them pretty small. I'm wiping off some of the water that's dripping. So it's the same thing where I start with my point and I push down, but I try to just keep it all like a bud, bud shape, pointing in probably all different directions. How many will I do? I don't know. I do tend to keep things in odd numbers, so probably one more. Probably one more. And now I will add, I think I want to make my green a little bit darker. Add some darker blue to this. And I think I'm even going to add a little bit of cranberry color to it and a little bit of green gold. But before, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing here, and be careful of your hand, depending on what kind of paper you have, I, a lot of times when I'm practicing, use inexpensive paper, and that tends to pool and not dry evenly or quickly, so watch your hand if, you, if, you're, if you're using paper where your painting is still wet. So I'm gonna touch the tip of my marker down, my marker, my paintbrush down here, um, knowing that it might bleed a little and I'm, I'm actually intending it to happen that way. I'm actually gonna draw right along the circle there. And just go down. What is my hand getting on? And do a little here and kind of connect that, connect that, go over here and connect that, go up here, you can draw a little more of a thing, add a little leaf shape, add another leaf shape up here. I'm just kind of sketching in a leaf shape rather than using my brush to make the shape. Go like that. Another one. Just kinda... All right. So that's a pretty bold colored element and I might want to balance that out on the other side with a similar color scheme. I think a sprig of berries might be what would work best. So I am going to grab some black and just mix it into this brown color that's already on my palette. But I don't want it to be too black, so I'm gonna add some green gold. I'm doing the vocal, what do they call that? When you end your syllables on a high note. Where did we all learn to do that? Where? And I'm just gonna, the, I'm gonna have my berries pointing this way. So I'm gonna draw a line 
with enough room for a berry at the end. And I am again kind of going along the curve that I drew before. I'm just going to have berries going out in several directions. So I can draw berries wherever I want. I'm going to have many, many berries. There we go. Kind of going up here. And I'm going to use that same cranberry color. And I'm just going to kind of draw circles. Depending on the size brush you have, you can make berry shapes with the body, the belly of your brush, but you have to have a small enough brush or be making big enough berries. So I'm just going to kind of draw little circles like so. Little happy circles. It's nice and warm in here now. This space here is doing its job. I do have a fireplace in my studio, a gas fireplace, but it is not set up for the season yet. Uh, now I'm just adding some berries random places, even though there aren't actually branches connecting them. I may go back and add branches or I might just leave that for the old imagination. Uh, okay, so I have filled this in. I will ultimately probably want to put something else here. Maybe I'll even draw the berries out a little bit closer to this because I do like them to be things to flow pretty well. There we go. I may go back and add little dots or add some more highlights on that, but I'm going to, or shadows rather, but I'm going to wait. Uh, okay, so. Now, maybe I'll put something else pink here. I think, let's see, we could do some little pink, little teeny tiny round pink flowers might be nice. So I'm gonna grab my permanent rose and add it here to this color. Water it down a bit with some, some of that water. Uh, yeah, I'll just do it straight up like that. So this is just watered down permanent rose. And I'm just gonna do, I'm not gonna do them right on the line, probably I'm wiping off some of the water. I'm just gonna do little teeny tiny swirly shapes, kind of like little roses, but uh, but much smaller than this one up here. So just some little C shapes. With, you could think of these as ranunculus. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow into this one, like just dotting it on, just to make these slightly different. And I'm gonna grab more of the cranberry color that I still have up here for this third one. That's too wet. And push down, push down. And then go back and add some cranberry color to the center. And then let's add a few little leaves. I'm just adding some of this bright green color to my darker color. And I'm gonna add some little green sprigs coming off in all directions. Like that. And I'm gonna go back and dot some pink into the center of this one to give it a little more. And I'm gonna grab even more of that cranberry color because I don't think this one's different enough. I just want them to look a little bit different from one another. I'm standing back, I'm looking at, looking at it. Uh, I'm debating if I want to do something more here because these are all very similarly sized and I don't want too much of that. But you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to draw a second coneflower right here, a smaller one, but also on the side, maybe pointing in this direction, like 
that little, put my little dots. And this one should be completely dry now, so if I paint into it, it would be fine. If that happens and it really bugs you, you could try using a paper towel. But it doesn't bug me enough to do that. I'm gonna go back and just build up the dome a little bit more. There we go. There we go. All right, so we got two there. I will add leaves there at some point. I'm just not ready to yet. And feel like that needs some more leaf action so I'm just gonna go back here and draw this other little leaf vine type thing this is all for fun people I get wrapped up in it too like, oh, it's not good enough, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're going to get better over time. You are sometimes going to look back and be embarrassed about things that you made. Uh, that's just what's going to happen. It's fine. And you should be proud of yourself if you're doing anything. If you're putting yourself out there at all, good job. If you're practicing anything, good job. I'm taking some pink here and I'm just going to add a little more color to this in certain areas. So it feels like it needs something. I'm going to do a teeny little pink star flower here, pointing in this direction and doing the high voice thing again. <laughs> Let's do, I want to do kind of a purple center. Some contrast on this one. Okay. And in order to have this be part of the shape, I am going to have a vine that goes out like this and connects them all. dark little sprig right here. There we go. And I'm going to add a little more, a few more dots of pink to the center here. Now that it's dry, or mostly dry. All right, now we just need to fill in the top. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to add some periwinkle to this color that I had going on here, just make kind of a purplish. And I think what I'm gonna do is uh, maybe, hmm, again, I'm gonna refer to my previous, some of my previous paintings and see what I think would look the best. I could just do some purple leaves. I don't know if that's the right color. I think I want something that has more blue in it. Normally I have blue here, but I've made a brown, so I'm gonna move things around. I do kind of try to keep my palette like orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, but it doesn't really work. It does sometimes work. I know a lot of watercolor people tell you to keep a paper towel nearby. I use uh, old 
small towels. I try to just, cause then I can wipe it over and over and over again. I just feel like I can use them for a lot longer than I could if I was doing um, paper towels. I'm gonna do um, maybe like a delphinium, like several small little buds on one thing here. So I'm gonna do one that's at the top point and it's just kind of like little, like a five pointed flower, but really small. That does not feel blue enough to me. Let's add more blue. And then here there might be several. Maybe I'll add a little to that. Boop, boop. And maybe here you would only see part of one of them. And down here might be sticking out farther because it's narrow at the top and gets wider at the base. And they can all sort of blend into each other because they are all part of the same flower. There might be a few random little petals here and there. purple back in so that one doesn't stand out so much. We'll do one here. We won't really be able to see the top petal. Same thing here. And I'm just making these petals by starting with my the point of my brush, pushing down, and then lifting back up. random petals out this way. I'm gonna let it basically go right into this rose. I'm gonna try to make it seem like it's behind it rather than right on top of it. All right, now let's add some green stem to that. Maybe green in the center too. I'm gonna have a little stem that goes out this way, just a smidge, and then kind of draw, you know, a stem that's going in several different directions. It goes down here. Maybe it comes out here a little bit. Maybe it's in the center, a few places, like so. Let me add a little of a brighter blue to some of the centers, or might go back with a magenta after, I don't know. I don't always paint flowers that exist in reality. Sometimes I paint flowers that only I can see. Uh, I'm gonna touch up these a little bit, maybe put like a line down the center. They feel like they lack oomph, and now that they're dry, I can can add a little more to them. These aren't bothering me so much. Those I feel like could be a little darker. Let's see, are they dry enough for me to draw lines? Just using the very tip of my brush. I said I would add stems to those, did I not? I don't know about stems, maybe just some leaves coming down. I added some darker blue to that. Let's just start here and do a thin skinny little line down to a skinny little leaf. Maybe one here too. And one down here. All right. I want to add a touch of shadow onto the edge of these. Just sort of drawing on one side. To give them a little more depth. And I might also add dark little dot. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. You can't just see my pulled back hair. Dots, dots, dots. That one's really dark and still wet. Dark, dark, dot, dot. Cool. 
that area still feels like it needs something to me. I might just add more leaves here. I could add more berries. What shall I do? I'm gonna do leaves, even though I think they'll be a different color. I'm gonna just have them though coming from the same area. And drawing them like that. Maybe I'll draw lines onto these or add a little of that color to make it seem like they go together. Maybe one more leaf right here if I can fit it without interfering. That works. And then maybe a leaf up here too going out this way. And I would like to add a little more depth to this center. Now that that's dry, that's pretty good. Uh, I feel pretty happy with that. Now, sometimes when a drawing is completely dry, I will go back. I have Tombow dual brush markers. Um, I have Prismacolor colored pencils. I have Posca markers. I have bazillions of art supplies, which I have gathered over many years. And um, sometimes I might go back and add a little something if I feel like it needs more uh, Right now I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. If you wanted to do something else with it, you could use, once it's completely dry, you could use a ruler to draw a straight line. If you wanted to write something in the center of it, um, you could scan it and then add words. Like if you wanted to send cards that you made, you could scan this in. And if you didn't feel like you wanted to do hand lettering, you could scan this into your computer and then you know type a word with a script font in the middle, like happy spring or Happy Mother's Day or whatever worked for you. Um, but there you go, an example of how to do a floral wreath. Really, the more kinds of flowers you learn, the more variety you will have with drawing this. But um, thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.